Well, hello, CJSD families. Danny Brown, school superintendent here, and Mr. Steve Dirksen, our school principal. I know we haven't uh, gotten a message out in a while, but we do hope that you got our parent update yesterday, along with several frequently asked questions um, for reopening and as it relates to our mitigation plan. Uh, today, this will be the first uh, video series to talk about some of the specifics with regards to our mitigation plan for reopening. Uh, today we're gonna to talk about health screenings, bus riding, face coverings, hand washing, and physical distancing. And so we hope to have more specific uh, videos for you here in the next couple of weeks. So I'm gonna start out today just talking a little bit about daily health screenings and temperature checks. I think the very, probably one of the most important things that we would like our families to do is make sure that you do a quick uh, health screening and even maybe a temperature check at home uh, each day prior to your child getting on the bus or coming to school. This is the first point in that screening continuum. Um, we hope that you uh, have gotten a chance to look at our family communication and mitigation plan, and it outlines all of the symptoms um, that um, the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, uh, has outlined, uh, such as a fever of 100.4 or higher, cough, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, fatigue, muscle or body aches, headache, new loss of taste or smell, sore throat, congestion or runny nose, nausea or vomiting, and diarrhea. So we um, hope that you can do that uh, home health check prior to your child coming to school. When your child does come to school, we'll be doing a um, temperature check and a health screening uh, once students arrive. Uh, it's going to be a lot different this year. As you well know, uh, one of the things that we're going to make sure that we do is our education, com educational community feels safe here at our school, and there are going to be a number of different uh, changes, and this is the first one. Uh, once uh, students come onto campus, instead of going out to the playground in the morning, they're going to be going right directly to their classroom. Uh, the teacher will go ahead and do a no-contact temperature check. And if it's 100.3 or lower, they'll have the child come into the classroom, sit down and wash their hands um, prior to sitting down. Uh, if they are interested in eating breakfast here in the cafeteria, we're gonna give them a sticker, which shows the cafeteria folks and everybody on campus that they have been cleared uh, to go to the cafeteria uh, for morning breakfast. If the temperature is a little bit above or is above 100.3, uh, we're going to have the child sit down for five minutes right outside the uh, room and then double check that temperature. If the temperature is 100.4 or higher, we're going to have the, uh, we're going to send that child to the health aid and the health aid will uh, do a more specific uh, screening uh, for symptoms and things like that. But we may have to call you uh, as parents and guardians to come and uh, pick up your child if your child does arrive to school with a fever. So that's one of the things that we'll be doing um, as the day gets started this year. Um, and then the next thing I want to talk a little bit about is bus riding. I know that many of you are going to, these first few weeks are going to uh, pick up and drop off your uh, child. Um, but for those bus riders, uh, just want to let you know that all of our buses will be sanitized um, in between routes and prior to students arriving on campus. We're going to have plenty of hand sanitizer on the bus. Our students and our bus drivers are gonna uh, be required to wear a face covering. One of the things we're gonna do too is we're gonna, uh, in the morning, we're going to load the bus from the front seat to the back. And of course, siblings will be able to sit together. Uh, as children are uh, dismissing from the bus uh, upon arrival, they will be dismissed from the bus from the front uh, to the back. And this avoids uh, students having to pass one another. And as Mr. Dirksen will talk about physical distancing here in a few minutes. Uh, we want to make sure that parents are continuing to follow those uh, screening responsibilities prior to the students um, stepping onto the bus. And we hope that um, parents and children are uh, practicing good physical distancing at the bus stops. We'll have clear signage on the buses that will also reiterate those specific uh, symptoms. Um, and the bus drivers will do a periphery check uh, once students get on the bus to see if there are, are any visible symptoms. 
If there are visible symptoms um, and the parent is at the bus stop, we will return the child to uh, the parent. But if not, uh, we will make sure that the uh, student does go directly to the health office uh, for further screening and a temperature check. So those are the things that we're going to be doing with our uh, busing and transportation. And now I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Dirksen. He's going to talk a little bit about uh, face coverings, physical distancing, and hand washing. Mr. Dirksen. Uh, thank you, Danny. Regarding face coverings, as per the governor's executive order, all students, parents, and visitors and employees are required to wear face masks or coverings while on campus. That includes when arriving to school, while outside walking to and from classes, while in the classrooms and on the buses, and when school is dismissed, when students are walking to the buses or to be picked up by their parents. There are three exceptions to this rule. One is while students are eating lunch, and the second is during recess, as long as students are physically distancing. And then the third option or this third ex exception is if students have a health issue that prohibits them from wearing a face covering as long as we have a doctor's note for that student. Face coverings are non-negotiable. According to the CDC, this is one of the best ways to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. Regarding physical distancing, we need to try to stay six feet apart at all times. There may be circumstances while in the classroom that students are not exactly six feet apart, but that's why students are wearing face mask coverings in the first place, so classrooms could be safe. During recess, face coverings will not be mandatory if physical distancing can take place. The recess duty aides will be assisting students with games and activities that promote physical distancing. Also, the recess areas will be divided into zones. All of this will help promote physical distancing during recess activities. To further reduce the risk of transmitting a virus, we will utilize what is called cohorting. Basically, this means that we will keep homeroom classes together as much as possible. Grade levels will stay together during lunch and recess times. At the middle school, students will stay together as a homeroom throughout the entire day and subject level teachers will assist students as needed. Students will not change classes except when going to specials. Hand washing. Hand washing will be done several times a day within the classrooms and hand sanitizing will also be utilized throughout the day. Back to you, Danny. Thank you, Mr. Dirksen. Uh, as just a wrap up, um, we'll going to go ahead and provide further clarification and further videos. We're going to talk about lunch and recess specific, more specifically in our next video, along with our new pickup and drop off procedures. Uh, please visit our website. Uh, our homepage is filled with information. We have our family communication slash mitigation plan um, that provides a lot of written detail of what we're discussing right now. That is a living document and it has uh, guidance from the CDC and local health departments um, revised guidance, we will uh, include that in our mitigation plan. Things like um, lunch recess, pickup drop off, uh, we're also going to be going over um, if there is a confirmed case and what those procedures will be uh, according to the Yavapai County Community Health Services. So stay, stay tuned for uh, further videos and we hope to see you soon CJSD families. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.